You don't have a future until you have a solid structure. Every strength is a product of the structure. The strength of your life is determined, defined, and revealed by the kind of structure you have. Without a great structure, you will not have a great future. Without a great structure, you, will, you might have fractures in the journey of life. A structured life is to have a structured, meaningful activities and event creating your wonderful future. Based on this, I welcome you to Family Line this day. My name is still Sebastian on one area, and uh, we are looking at a wonderful series, a great series, one of the best that I can say that heaven have privileged me to like understudy. And before we quickly go into that, I will just tell you, please, pastors, let's ensure that we continue in this uh, prayer. Prayer that I've been encouraging you, most churches are still fasting. Ensure that you lead your congregation to intercede for Nigeria, to intercede for Africa because of this infiltration and this invasion that they called Boko Haram. Now we are not talking about Fulani Hesmen destroying people. I encourage us, let us stay in the place of prayer to push back this satanic holocaust. Every level creates a new devil. Let us stay in the place of prayer. Ezekiel chapter 11, Ezekiel chapter 11, from verse 1 to 6 and verse 13. Ezekiel chapter 11, from verse 1 to 6 and verse 13. Verse 1 to 6 made us to know, I'm paraphrasing, that it is only 25 people of the children of the princes that are causing iniquity and havoc in the land. They said the people are meat and they place the people in the port of the cordrop. Port of the cordrop, if you watch cartoon very well, you will see it's those witchcraft pot. They use their magic wine to wine it and turn it. In verse 4 of Ezekiel chapter 11, the Bible said, God said, that son of man, prophesy over these sons of the princess. When I started prophesying, verse 5, verse 13 said, and the Lord struck everyone that are doing evil. Let me tell you, if you are happy at the killings, I am not. Even God does not want an unbeliever to die. And we have a leader or leadership that are keeping quiet. We are using, I'm using this platform to let you stay in the place of prayer. I believe God that God will intercede. Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel chapter 9 from verse 1 to 6. Every child of God all over the globe hear the word of God. Ezekiel chapter 9 from verse 1 to 6. The angel of God with the ink horn is going around to place a mark on your forehead. A mark of exception. Every satanic holocaust. All their plan to kill every predominant ordained child of God. The ink will save you in the name of Jesus. When the applause come, the Lord will deliver you. When the applause come, the Lord will put you on exemption. On exemption. You are exempted from emergency death. You are exempted from early death. You are exempted from the arrow of these so-called wicked individuals that are killing people in this land. The heaven will stand and hold every soul that is in agreement with them accountable. I'm telling you, study that Ezekiel chapter 9 from verse 1 to 6. You will see what the word of God, not Pastor Sebastian, not this redemption camp. It is the word of God, and it will become a reality in the name of Jesus. So we are looking at this new series we are starting. Is what? Have a structured life. You don't have a future without a structure. Greatness is built on the altar of structure. You cannot achieve greatness without what? A structure. If you don't have a structure, you will have fractures. In the journey of life, your understanding of the cultivation of structure will move you from one level of advancement to another level of achievement. If you refuse to embrace structure, life, life itself will force you, will push you, will what? Will deal with that person to have what? A structure. What are we talking about? Pastor, what are you saying about structure? Those of you that are here that have been asking and be calling concerning Mastering Life. We just finished the series of Mastering Life. This is the pack of Mastering Life. All the teachings are there. You are interested before the end of the program. You will see my number or my email address. Call us and let us discuss how you're going to get yours. When we talk about structure, structure is an organized system. Let me start from a way you can understand. Structure is a building. 
That's why they, when they say structure, they are talking about a building. So you can't have a future if you don't have a building pattern. A pattern, a step-by-step -step arrangement of how to achieve things, how to accomplish things, how to divine and design things about your life. You can't have a what? A great future without you having a building model. When we talk about structure, organized system. When we talk about structure, organized activity, organized event. You hear me clearly? Time is useless without an event in it. What gives time value is the activity you do with time. Let me say it again. What gives time value, what gives time importance is the activity you do with time. That's why great people, wealthy and successful people, I'm not talking about people that stole or people that steal. I'm talking about people that practically with work and responsibility, very labor, produce what? Earnings. They hardly sleep for 12 hours. They hardly sleep for 13 hours. They even hardly sleep for six. Why? If you sleep for eight hours, you have spent one third of the day sleeping. Sleeping for eight hours for three weeks, one week you have spent sleeping. Sleeping for eight hours for nine years, you have spent three years sleeping. Did you come to this world to sleep? So you need to understand structure. What is structure? Orderly placement of a pattern event in your life. What is structure? Structure is the, uh, the, the arrangement of every part of your life coming together to have a designed advantage. So let us now combine both of them for us to understand. Because this morning or this day, I'm going to just give you the introduction. But there's a place key in my heart that I want us to get to for you to have a balanced understanding of this discourse. We're going to discuss this till we get to convention season. For you to know, greatness does just don't happen. An intelligent child does not just emerge from the blues. An intelligent child is a product of a structured life. Intelligent child. If you have not been to body house, I'm talking about body house of those days, well, God help us these days too, because they have regimented time. Time to eat, time to read, time to study, time to do your assignment. That is what? Structure, 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 structure. As a home, do you have a structured home? Do you have a structured family? Do you have a structured activity? Students out there, do you have a structured time? <laughs> are, you watching, are you on social media 27-7? You can't become great without you having a structured what? A structured pattern of behavioral pattern. So when we look at it, see, see let, me, let me jump my note before I give, you, I give you the definition. Let me jump my note. Our father and the Lord, you see everything happening to him. You think it's just by child's play? You think it's breketo ukolishin? They be alodobe has to come back. They are the if it is by prayer, you think everybody will not get there? You think it's by prayer alone? You think everybody will not get there? Let me show you the pattern of the structure that our Father and the Lord have adopted. I'm just showing you one because I'm jumping my note to create a balance for you to appreciate what we are about to discuss. Luke chapter 21, verse 37 to 38. Luke 21, verse 37 to to what? To 38. This is the structured life of Jesus Christ. And many of us think it's child's play. Christianity is not for what? It's not for lazy people. It's not wishy-washy. That's why Hebrews 11 says, God Almighty is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. If you don't diligently seek him as a product of what? Structured life. Don't expect his reward. Look, I understand grace. I'm still looking at what everybody is saying is grace, grace. Without grace, you fall into disgrace. Everybody is in grace. To, look, if everybody is in grace to succeed, why is everybody not succeeding? Luke 21, 37. And in the daytime, if that Bible is your own, underline daytime. In the daytime, he was teaching in the temple. At night, underline night, if that Bible is your own. At night, he went out and stayed at the mountain called Olivet. 38, verse 38. In the early morning, if that Bible is your own, underline any morning. In the mo early morning, all people came to him in the temple and what? And heard him. Amen. Are you, uh, did you see three, three? Do you see pattern of Jesus' behavioral pattern? In the morning, he were what? In the temple. What was he doing? Teaching. 
In the night, he was where? At Mount Oliver. To do what? Pray. In the morning, what does he do? He resumed duty. Those of you that go for VG, because you went on VG, you will not go to work. You will not open your shop. And did, did you see Jesus sleeping in the morning? Did you see? This is the concept that our Father and the Lord took. This is the concept our Father and the Lord embraced. This is the concept our Father and the Lord is working with. This is the concept that is generating the power, that is seeing everything working. You think it's only, look, you think it's just wishy wishy. Check this concept. Every rich, successful one all over the globe are imbibed, are doing, carrying out this kind of activity. But we Christians are what? Because you went for VG. Because you prayed, you woke up by 2 a.m. and you prayed till 5. Ah, now, how, 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 the way my body is doing me. You think somebody will come and beg you or pity you? Anybody that is expecting pity, you will end up in the pit. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. So you wake up and do what? And embrace the life responsibility. So let's look at what is a structured life. I've given you scriptural definition of a scriptural life, but let us look at the, the word, <laughs> the explanation in definition terms. A structured life is an activity targeted at a defined objective. A structured life is, is an activity or activities targeted at a defined objective. Number two, a structured life is an organized system of productive behavioral pattern targeted at a predefined and ordained end. Number three, it is an orderly arrangement of what? Events. Orderly arrangement of events or work connected and combined towards what? Towards a desired end. Towards a desired end. Towards what? A desired end. Let me come back to that. An orderly arrangement. Is your life in order? Disorderliness is the root of waste. Disorderliness is the root of poverty. Disorderliness is the root of what? Problem in marriage. When your life is not properly arranged. Let me give you practical illustration. Those of you that, <laughs> those of you that have your, your suitcases, you don't neatly properly fold those clothes. You will discover that the same suitcases cannot contain a lot of clothes when you just pour the clothes there. That is, disorderly, that is disorderliness. The pouring clothes there, about 20 clothes, just pour 20 clothes in your suitcase, depending on the size, without properly folding it, that is order. Arranging it, that is order. In sequence, when you arrange those clothes in sequence, instead of collecting or containing 15 or 20, it might contain more. Your life cannot achieve more if your life is not in order. If your life is in disorder, <laughs> the Lord will help you. The devil assignment is to ensure your life is not in order. But this morning, heaven will open your understanding and intelligence. And you will walk into the cautiousness and the reality of God ordained what? Orderliness in the name of Jesus. The next definition. What is a structured life? A structured life is an organized daily habit designed to produce a resultful and successful end. Organized daily habit. What is habit? Anything you repeat for 21 days becomes a habit. Any activity you repeat for 21 days becomes a habit, either positive or negative. Sleeping more than eight hours is a habit. Lack of reading is a habit. And they have habits for successful people, and they have habits for failures. They have habits for intelligent people. They have habits for the ones that are not intelligent. They have habits for, for poor people, and they have habits for what? Rich people. They have habits for problem-solving people. Pastor, what do you mean problem solving people? Anybody that is a problem solver does not pray. Talk about the situation. He talks about the solution. Many complain about what? The situations. Uh, this, yes, the situation more than the solution. Problem solving individuals focus on solution more than situation. They focus on solution more than circumstances. That's why when you look at our country, when you look at Africa, people that are stagnated, they complain. Great people don't complain. Every complaint is to be solved. 
Great people don't shift blame. Our president, our leader, is everybody saying that he's keeping quiet not to have done what? <coughs> Consigning the killing. That it is politically motivated. Excuse me. You have not said anything. You have said nothing. 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 You have said nothing. Mm. It is well with us. And some people want such people to come and still rule us the next time. Well, God will give everybody intelligence. I'm not a politician, but I am trying to let us think. Think outside the box. Think. You start from the box, you think outside the box. Because if you are thinking without the box, you might not have a shape. You might not have a form. You might not have a direction. Organized habit. Structured life. What is structured life? Structured life is focusing at what you want to achieve. Giving all it takes, avoiding distraction. Distraction is one of the most dangerous, destructive weapons on planet Earth. Distraction. Distraction. It is distraction that leads to what? Die vision. When you have a vision and they give you two visions, it is called what? Die vision. Division is made up of two words. Die, D-I, and what? Vision. What does die mean? Die means two. That means you can't chase two things at the same time. Because if the devil wants to just distract you, he gives you what? He gives you division. So when you don't have a structured life, you can see what I'm saying. You don't have a future. So structure creates what? Focus. Structure creates focus. And focus releases what? Creative energy for productivity. Do you have a structured life in your marriage? Do you have a structured life as a single person? Do you have a structured... It's, look, let, let, let's make it, let's bring it home. Is your finance structured? Is your work ethics structured? Listen, where your mental intelligence is or was last year, is it at the same place it is today? How many books have you read? This is July. From January till now, how many? Do you have a library? I'm talking about structure. Do you have a library? I'm not boasting, but I'm just learning. Ask any of them. Any day I have my program, I will still be reading till they will tell me it's time for you to solve. It's not that my note is not complete. What I documented, I can't even finish it in one episode. But the question is this. Is your life structured? I said something in the last, the last series. The law of cause and effect. The, look, there is a reason behind you failing. Live with a wizard. And I am not undermining or looking down at what? At, at, at spiritual warfare. I understand spiritual warfare. We engage spiritual warfare daily. But we need to know what? As you are engaging spiritual warfare, your intelligence and what? An intellectual faculty must be working. How do you do it? Do you have a structured life for your organization? I tell people with no apology. Office is not a place where they show you love. You want love? Go and stay at home. Office is a place of reward. Office is a place of performance. You want to be my friend? Help me as the owner of the organization, head of department, to achieve my goal. Christianity is not stupidity. Christianity is what? It's you knowing how to have a structured life. Go and study the book of Daniel. Daniel had contemporaries that are who? Unbelievers. And Daniel was what? Achieving, achieving and creating results. What made Daniel to stay and serve four different kings, stayed 80 years, was what? Was because he was what? He was relevant. What made him to be relevant? Structured life. What made him to be relevant? Because he was solving problems. He was impactful, relevant, and resultful. Are you? Are you? You need to come to that understanding. Because we need to see. Because I'm speaking out of my pain. Because I've seen things not work well. And we Christians are supposed to be. Because the Bible said we are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill that cannot be hidden. Nobody can light candle and put it under the basket. But you put it upon platforms or what? Lampstand to create light. We are supposed to be the one that will light in the world. If we are the ones supposed to light the world and we are having problems, can't you see that the whole world is in darkness? So we need to create in your nation, in your environment, in everything, a child of God supposed to be distinguished. You don't need to tell me that what? That I'm a Christian. Your conduct, your character, your behavior. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Many of us fast. We pray. We pray. We confess scripture. But at the end of the day, you don't see the, you, you don't see the result. Do you know that there's, 
there's power leakage. If such person come, I will just show you scripture. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 1 to 3. Apostle Paul was talking to the Christians, not unbelievable, because if you start, verse 1 said, Oh, brethren, I wish to talk to you as spiritual, but you people are babes. He said, I wish to give you strong meat, but you people are babes, street drinking milk. He said, Are you not Kana? Kana means you are an ordinary man. Kana means ordinary man. He said, I wish you for you to be spiritual. How? He said, you are in, in your midst. Three things that are more in your midst. What is it? Envy. Envy leaks the spiritual power in you. Envy. Strife. What is strife? Quarrel. He leaks power. In Genesis chapter 13, when Abraham and Lot, servants, wanted to start quarreling, strife, Abraham said, no, 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 no. The moment Abraham stopped, I said, let us separate. God started speaking to Abraham. And the third one is what? Division. Division starts with biting light. And excuse me, these are the embodiment of what we see in the church. Check people that claim to be prayer warriors. They are bitter. They are angry. They are envious. They are, bad. <laughs> they are gossipers. They are everything. Slanderers. Some things you will hear, your ear will grow big. Bishop Oedeko says something. He says, some pastors will lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> you are not doubting of their call. You are doubting whether they have salvation. That's why I quoted him, so you can know. Bishop Oedipo said, some pastors will lie. You are not checking whether the pastor is called. You are checking whether the pastor is born again. The Lord will give us understanding in the name of Jesus. So we need to come to that. Let's quickly move to the next thing. What are we saying? Life is structured in a circle and not linear. Our life is structured in a circle, not linear. So we need to understand that. Because life is cyclic. Life is cyclic. That was why where I read Luke 21, verse 37 and 38, talking about Jesus Christ. Luke 21, 37 and 38. That's why I was telling you that you should mark it. They started with what? Daytime. What he did during the daytime. What he did during what? The night season. What he did in the morning. What he did. Those are, it's a circle. It's a circle. Let me tell you something. There, there, there's, there's this funny, funny thing you, you, you look, look at. Uh, 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 let me jump and, and get to this place. They, they made us to understand that life is divided into compartments. Life is structured into compartments. You need to come to understand this phase of life you find yourself. Life is structured in compartments. That's why in John chapter 9 verse 4, John chapter 9 verse 4, what did they say in John chapter 9 verse 4? Jesus was speaking. He said, I must walk the walk of him who sent me while it is day. Can you imagine? He said, the night is coming when no man can walk. So, morning season and night season. Do you know that in life, in life they call something the morning season, they call something the afternoon season, they call something the, <laughs> the, 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 the night season. I'm jumping my note, but I need you to understand, for you to walk and appreciate what I'm trying to say. Because we are going to look at it in this series. In what? In details. The morning season of your life is between a zero. <laughs> That is where the conception, from conception to where you are 30, is supposed to be the learning time, the learning season of your life. This is where a lot of people will miss it. Learning is supposed to be from conception till you die. Learning. But because of what? Stage by stage in partition and development. Learning. There's what they call the morning season of your life. is the learning time. And if when you're supposed to be learning, you are playing, you are destroying and distorting, fracturing your life without you coming to the realization. Irrespective of the environment. Irrespective of the environment. Look, because there are various forms of learning. You have formal learning, you have what? Informal learning. Formal learning is when you go to schools and university. Informal learning is when you read by books, where you develop yourself by books. Shakespeare did not go to any formal education. The, the historians said, according to his autobiography, that, that Shakespeare read more books than his what? His professors of his days. They just discovered recently that most of the Shakespeare quote was not him. It was from the authors of the books he's reading or he read. Anthony Robinson, Anthony Robinson in the U.S., before he got to the age of 17, read over 500, 700 motivational books. That's why he's the best speaker, one of the best speakers in the U.S. So, so the learning season of your life, well, that's why when you look at people in this age bracket and see what they do, you bleed in your heart. 
The second stage is the early stage, the early season. The early season. The early season is between the age at one to 65. It can be more. And the what? And the evening season is from 65 till God calls you in glory. That is when you return back to the environment. Because all this, I've just told you this, for you to know that we are going to take it stage by stage. You will see the character, the behavioral pattern, what is expected for you to learn. There are some of us that are giving back. We are not up to 60. We are giving back to the society. We are giving back. So when you come to that realization, you do what? You put effort. Life is structured to, life is structured to produce a perfect timing, season, and moment in your life. Because there's connection to time and what you become alive. A structured life is an efficient and effective distribution of what? Your eventful time. A structured life. That is why the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, many of you, you know the scripture. Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1 to 8 and 11. Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 to 8 and 11. If you read it, you will, you will be amazed. Everything has to do with time. That is what? Structure. It says, to everything there is a season. A season means a moment, a timing. A time for every purpose under heaven. That time is talking about moment. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to plant. A time to pluck what you have planted. When you don't plant, don't expect to pluck out anything. That's harvest. When you waste time, when everybody's planting, like what a lot of young people are doing, you think you have time, you don't. Sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up, the day is going. Look at the walk-up they started. In less than how many days, we have, de we have determined the, the winner. And you are still there, jumping up and down. <laughs> Verse 3 of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. He says, there's a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up. Time, meaning a moment, a moment. When you're supposed to plant and you are sleeping. <laughs> have you asked yourself, look, please forgive me. I'm not preaching man. I am appreciating the, the gift of, of, of man to humanity. Our Father and the Lord is a gift. Do you know what he has pulled down? He has surpassed every of his general on this planet Earth by combining their intelligence to become one. Can you see the massive thing? Look, I, I, I look at him. Walking 22 kilometers every day to pray is a structured life. And I pray that every one of us that are his spiritual children should embrace and contact such grace by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I will go on break now. Don't change that dial. The moment I'm back, just round off this section. Then we start asking questions. Remain blessed. Don't change that dial. I will be back. Heavens International Center. I believe that what you see and hear here will arouse your faith and your life will never remain the same. Challenge God using what you see here as a point of contact to your miracle.
Welcome back to Family Life. My name is Sir Sebastian. On one hand, we are still looking at um, our new series that we just started today. Have a structured life, part one. Have a structured life, part one. And I was just giving you Ecclesiastes chapter three, and we were just in verse three, going to verse four. But before we look, look quickly, I'll just let you know that this Mastering Life um, DVD is complete, it's out. You need to get it to have understanding, maximizing your life, the money in you, uh, conquering life. These are life series that God has given one insight to discuss on this program. Life issues and prayer. Power of self-mastery. Many of them. Some people will tell me, Pastor, I don't have time to, uh, to listen to the DVD. Let me tell you, nobody has time. You have, to, you, you have to create the time. That is why structure is in place. Structure is in place. <laughs> if you study Acts chapter 27, Acts 27, those people, when they had a shipwreck, when they had a turbulent time in the sea, the Bible said for 14 days they abstained from food. It's not that they were fasting, you know. The, the problem, the turmoil, made them not to eat. <laughs> Ordinarily, some of them could not fast for five days or three days. But the problem, don't let God use problem to force you to do things. Don't let God allow life. Because that's, that's the way God does things. God does not bring problem. He, he pushes back for you to see some certain things. He has been protecting you, guiding you. You are still speaking. <laughs> he steps back. Allow you to see it. When you see it, you will now come to him. So what am I saying? You create time. If I tell you there are some of the learning CDs or series that I have, I use marker to write some things on it. God is my witness. I can't lie to you. I mark some things. There are some I listen to seven times. There's, there's a teaching material I bought two years ago. God Almighty is my witness. If I mention the name of the speakers, 13 of them, they were speaking, I couldn't understand, comprehend what they were saying. What does that mean? Means that they were, they were speaking from their heart. Look at it like this. If you want, I can tell you scripture. If you are not spiritual, when you read the book of Romans, you won't understand it. If you are not spiritually grounded, you read Ephesians and Galatians, you can't understand it. I'm not telling you theory. If you think it's too, come and you start preaching it. Teach the series. Because you need to grow. I just picked those CDs and I started understanding what they were saying. Because these people are up there and I have all their collections. Most of them are Harvard professors. What has happened to me? I have grown to meet them. If you are here, if you are here and you are reading books that are here, you won't understand it. It will look at stories. There's one of our church members, he's just 16. 16 years. God Almighty is my witness. Let me mention his name. You don't know him, so that my members that are watching, because I told him. His name is, uh, uh, what's his name now? James Oni. He brought a book he was reading. I picked up the book. I told him that if you can understand what is inside this book, your life will move forward. But I said, this book, this book, as you are, as you are reading it, the book will be, <laughs> it will be shaking in your head. And he said, sir, it's the truth. I said, this chapter, can you understand it? He explained. I said, I give you two over ten. You try it at your age. I said, if you read it more, go back and read it. It's a thing you read quietly. When you read it more, you will understand it. I will score. Why am I taking time on this section? I am telling you how to have a structured life that will move you to the next level. Listen, you are here. You want God to promote you. Praying in tongues for them to put you here is a problem. When God promotes you, don't you know that every level has its problem? When you are here, you have not solved this problem here. You want to get here. In between this gap, who are the problems there? The problems here, you must learn how to solve them. You say, hmm, you want promotion, you want here. When you get here and you see the problem, you run away. That's why I'm telling you, if you are there as a single person, the essence of marriage is you have lived your single life successfully, you move to the next level, the next stage of your life. What is the next stage? Marriage. Marriage. I'm sure now they should put my number, <laughs> the, the number of the studio number so that they can call and be part of the program for you to contribute. I just, I just, I'm just passionate about this title or this series that we are running. That's the number of the studio. Please call and mute your TV cell for us to discuss. Verse 4 of that Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 4. It says, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Meaning these things are structured. Verse 5, a time to cast out stone, a time to gather stone. So <laughs> for you to throw stone, wow, what an illustration. 
There are times to gather it because if you don't gather it, what happened? Let me give you that illustratively. You are always spending money. You are not gathering money. A time will come you don't have money to spend. It's not witch and wizard. Remember, remember, don't forget the stages. So we are going to look at it. They have learning stage, they have earning stage, and they have what? Giving back stage. If you don't learn well, you will earn because your learning defines your earning level. What you earn in life is a product of what you have learned. Hello, welcome to Family Night. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? My name is Rick. I'm calling from Jones. Okay, my caller from Jones. What's the question of contribution, please? Okay. To structure your life is to be organized. I was discussing with a pastor on collecting loan to accomplish a project, specifically building projects. And he said to me, collecting God is a sin. It means you are not putting your total trust on God. And here I want to have that loan to accomplish a business as I plan. And he's now telling me that if you are not putting your, your whole trust on God to accomplish something, is a sin. So please, I want you to comment on that. Thank you. Ma, listen. Listen to me. That is misinterpretation of the scripture. Collecting loan is not a sin. What the Bible says is that a borrower is a servant to the lender. What it means is that if you borrow to spend, to borrow to eat, borrow to buy cloth, borrow to get a shwebi, let me tell you, <laughs> it's, a, it's what? You will be a servant to that person. That is what the Bible was preaching against. We have, have studied financial matters on the Bible. Listen, you are collecting loan to do a business. Let me tell you, Ask the pastor, please lower your TV set so you, so you can hear me clearly. Lower your TV set. Ask the pastor, there are, some, there are some contracts and business you will do. You can never have the capital. You can never have the amount of money to do it. That's why they will tell you that some things are what? They call it uncollateralized. There are some loans. I will explain this well. Because Chris, there are some projects you will do. that they are, Like now, they ask you to build a stadium. Give you the contractor to build a stadium. Where will you get the money? Which money you will get that will have that thing? That's why they have consortiums of banks coming to fund one project. There might be 15 banks coming to fund. Let me give you an example. The project you want to do is 850 billion pounds. Where will you get that money? You will sell the whole of your village. It's not enough. So what we are saying is collecting money to spend on yourself is bad. You use money to generate money when the idea is there. That is how the banks create money. If you study elementary economics of banking system, banks collect, you go there and deposit money in the bank, they collect your money, use it to lend to people to generate money. So it's not a sin. Where it becomes a sin is that you collect a loan from the bank to do business, and you use it to buy car, you use it to buy house, you use it to wear clothes on yourself. Listen, the bank will come and carry everybody. That is what they are telling you. People in our church, the first question you want to collect loan, I will ask you, are you sure that the business can generate back the money you are collecting? That's why if you are a good, I'm speaking to the bank because this question is banking matter. If you are a good business person, you talk to your bankers. The first thing they will give you advice is don't collect loan to do the first business transaction. Why? Because you don't know the terrain. Use your money to do the business transaction. If you lose the money, you have learned lessons. If the, look, there's a difference between paper profit and what a real activity profit. So when you try with paper profit, what is paper profit? You go and buy something and so so and so place. It's bought for five, it's sold for ten naira, and you go and sell it at another the destination for twenty naira. You see that say paper ping pong ping pong ping. My answer, my 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 profit is ten naira. That is F twelve. You have failed. Your profit is not twelve naira or it's not ten naira because in between the line you incurred some expenses you didn't know. There are some unforeseen contingencies that happened. So intelligence needs to tell you, because that's why I'm telling Christians, we should grow. Pastors, we should grow. It's not that we should just sit and navigate to do him, 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 him. Before, pastors, the only responsibility they give pastors in program is for us to take open prayer. But now it's not. They give us, they, give, they invite us to speak. Why? Intelligence of pastors and that of God has blended together for us to be relevant. Please, let's prepare solid standard members. Hello, welcome to Family Nine. Good morning, sir. Yes, what's your name? Where are you calling from, please? My name is Tommy. I'm calling from 
from Lagos. Yes, yeah, which part of Lagos, Fumi? I'm calling from Bagada, Lagos. Okay, Fumi from Bagada. What's your question or contribution, ma'am? Okay, my question is, um, I am easily distracted. Like, if I start, it is not as if I don't structure myself. Once I set the target, I don't get it to the end. And it has been going on for a while. Is so but, 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 but you see the thing is that you are you are not focused. You are not focus is a total concentration. Focus is a total concept. You focus your mind. You focus your mind, your emotion, your energy, your mentality on that thing. That is why they will tell you that anything you want to achieve, put it on a paper, put it, paste it where you will wake up in the morning and you see it. Let that thing be the first thing in your mouth every morning. Let it be the last thing on your mouth or your lips before you go and sleep. Let that thing. So you start working on yourself. Learn it. Just call me after. There are books for you to read, for you to learn, because that is development, working on yourself to be what? To be focused, to be focused, to be focused, to be focused. Matthew 6.22, Matthew 6.22. He said, if the eye is single, the whole body will be full of light. If your eye is single, if your, that's why I told you, if the devil wants to stop you from you achieving your vision, he gives you another vision. That is thy vision. People that don't make it in life are first-class materials. Why? They are too intelligent. Why are they too intelligent? They deplete their energy. The principle of laser beam. Laser beam, when you focus laser beam on a dry leaf, it burns the fire. Why? Because sunlight produces the energy. Laser beam, <laughs> the, the magnifier, I mean, the magnifier makes the light to be on what? Focused on the leaf. Remove the magnifier. The energy of sun is scattered. That is the way many of us look. The Lord will give us intelligence in the name of Jesus. For me, just try. Get yourself. You learn it. You work on yourself. God will give you intelligence in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes, my caller from Ghana. Please mute your TV set, please. Yes, welcome. Yeah, what's your name? <laughs> what's your name, sir? I'm Eric. I'm calling from Accra. Yes, Eric from Accra. Yes, what's your question or contribution, sir? It's my first time watching the show and I'm impressed. Yes, I'm good to be yeah, impressed. Yeah, we give, God the, we give God the glory, sir. What's your question or contribution, sir? No question, just other to say I'm impressed and I'll keep on watching. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. God will strengthen you. And we believe God, after this series, your life will move to the next level in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, just, just, just get yourself prepared. Because now, how can, how can you be in that kind of understanding and want to take time to move forward. So that verse 5 of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says a time to cast stone, a time to gather stone, and a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. Welcome to Family Night. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. Hello yes. What's, what's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Please, please mute your TV set. Please mute your TV set. Please mute your... Mute, reduce the volume of your TV set, sir. Reduce the volume of your TV set, please. You can't be calling at the same time want to hear yourself talk. It will create an echo at the background that I cannot hear. Yes, welcome to Family Night. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, just keep on trying. So the verse 6 of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. You can complete the reading of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 at home. Yes, welcome to Family Night. Hello, my name is Austin. Calling from Abuja. Austin from Abuja. What's your question or contribution, sir? Uh, my question is, maybe you have something doing, and you have the idea of two things doing. Okay. But the one that you are doing now, you see are not in yourself, having passion for the one that you are not doing now. Is it that a person should leave the one that is doing as that, as that the one that he is doing himself doing in the dream? Which one is funding, talking? which one is funding each other? Which one is, is it the one you have passion for? That, that the is... one that I have, the one that I have passion for. The finance is not there to fund it. Wisdom will tell you, my brother. Eh? The one where you don't have, the one you have passion for should hold on. <laughs> the one you don't have passion for is the one bringing money. The Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your strength. Ecclesiastes 9.10. The one you have passion for will come at a later day. If you drop the one that is generating the, the money, <laughs> it is well with you in the name of Jesus. So God will give you intelligence you will discover that you are not able to pay bills. And, um, and it is, welcome to Family Line. 
Hello, yes, welcome to Family Line. Please mute your TV set. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Please mute your TV set. Mute your TV set. And let us talk where your phones are. I'm calling from a state. Your TV set is still on. I can still hear echo. What is your name, sir? I've done that now. Yes. What, is your, what is your name, sir? What is your name, sir? And your question or contribution? My name is Fortune. I'm calling you from a state. So what is your question or contribution, Fortune? Love to have them. Fine. Um, uh, by the end of the program, before the end of the program, my number and email address will be on your screen. You will copy it and let us discuss from there. Thank you very, very much for today. It's not this number I'm using. It is not this number. This is the studio's number. My own number will be uh, displayed before the end of the program. Thank you very much, Fortune. Yeah. Not this one I'm using. Not this one, Fortune, sir. Not this one. My end will be shown okay. after. Thank you. Thank you. So the next line, the next line is verse 6. It says, a time to gain. And the time to lose. There are things you put in place to a season to gain, and a season for 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 you to lose. And what define and determine this season is what knowledge. What define and determine this season is is what is knowledge. Because seasons are dynamic. Seasons are dynamic. The same way, <laughs> if you don't cultivate and nurture things you've planted. You might not have good harvest. It's the same day too in life and in business. If you don't know how to nurture your business for fruitfulness, you might not have what. Welcome to Family Life. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Uh, I'm Tony Tony, calling from Lagos. Which part of Lagos, sir? Uh, from Ikotun. Okay, my caller from Ikotun. So, what's your question or contribution on Sunday? Uh, well, sir, this is the first time I'm listening to the program and. I'm very, very, very impressed because I don't know pastors are this intelligent. <laughs> oh, so I'm intelligent. Oh, thank you very much. I'm clapping for myself. <laughs> yes, go ahead. So what, what's your question or contribution, sir? Again, uh, what I feel is that uh, I have, I have a, a dream. And sometimes the dream, I say I can achieve them. But if my friends keep on telling me it seems too big. I, I didn't get you clearly. Along the line, you went off. You said you have a dream. Well, let's, let's be sure. Is it, is it, calm down. Is it a dream that you dreamt or you just, you have a vision of things you want to achieve? I have aspirations and goals to achieve. Okay, okay, okay. And your friend is telling you you can't achieve them? Hello, talk, talk. Your friend is telling you you can't achieve them. Hello. Things that I planned out for my life. Okay, so but friends, friends keep on making me feel I don't, I dream too big. Look, look, see. So, so how do I? How uh, do you I see, number one, number one, number one, number one, number one, number one, my brother, calm down, calm down. Calm down, no. But the dreams are always too big, so there is no need starting up. Listen to me now. Ah, <laughs> calm down. You have been talking, I understood you or whatever. Listen, listen. Number one, disconnect yourself from that friend. That's not a good friend. Let me explain why. Listen, the dream is bigger than you. Every dream is bigger than everybody. Nobody can, can start with a dream you can achieve. Any dream that is from God is bigger than you. You can't do it, number two. Now, why must you disconnect from your friend? Your friend is discouraging you. What is discouragement? Discouragement is to take out courage from you, take out energy from you, take out strength from you, take out possibility mentality from you. That is discouragement. What is encouragement? You need people that will encourage you. The friend that will add courage, will add strength, will motivate you, will strengthen you. Those are the people you need. So, no wisdom. Keep disconnect from that guy completely. It, it's your choice. Jesus went somewhere to pray, to pray for the child, the, 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 the daughter that was dead. He got there, people were crying. The people that were crying, what did he do first? He told them to go outside. When there is a negative you know, emotion, you can't achieve anything. The Bible made us to understand in, Matthew, in Mark chapter 6, Mark chapter 6, that Jesus can by no means do any miracle in his own village. Why? Because of what? Unbelief. What is unbelief? Negative emotion. What is unbelief? Discouragement. So wisdom tells you to disconnect yourself from such. And as you do, God Almighty will bless you in the name of Jesus. See, that is the truth.
Look, let me tell you, friendship is not by force. It's by choice. Welcome to Family Night. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Fine. Friendship is not by force. It's by, it's by what? Choice. There are people that are not structured for your future. Welcome to Family Night. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Oh, my life has jumped. Everybody wants to call me. <laughs> Welcome to Family Night. I have less than three minutes now. Please, I want to just take one or two callers. Welcome to Family Night. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Everybody wants to call. Everybody just keep on, just keep on trying. Hello? Hello, welcome to Family Night. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Family Night. Hello, welcome to Family Line. Just keep on. Because my brother, that verse of Ecclesiastes answered your question. He said, a time to gain, a time to loss, a time to keep, and a time to throw away. So it is time for you to throw away that your friend. It's not good for your future. Hello, welcome to Family Line. <laughs> Hello, just welcome to Family Line. A lot of people want to be part of the program. We give God the praise. And my brother, thank you for appreciating me and saying nice things about me. All the glory goes to God Almighty and his angel. Welcome to Family Line. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Just keep on trying. Just keep on trying. Everybody want to be part of the program. Hello? That's why Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 7 Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 7, it says, A time to tear, a time to tear, and a time to sow. If there is a time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep quiet and a time to what? To speak. Hello, welcome to Family Line. Hello? Hello? Just keep on trying. They said, it, verse 8 of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there is a time to love. Hello, welcome to Family Line. A time to hate and a time to do what? A time to war and a time for what? Peace. I think the studio should put my number now on the screen. I have less than two minutes. My number should be on the screen. Yes, that's my number and that's my email address. Everybody that is trying to like get and be part of this program, please, that's my email address and that's my number. Just try as much as you can to call and be part of the program. Please, when you are sending email, please try as much as possible that the email should not be at least more than one paragraph or two maximum so that I can do what I can reply. And the Lord Almighty will bless you all for everybody. Ah, my time is up. My time is up. But I will still stay in the studio to answer the calls that many people have been trying to call to be part of this program. Just keep on trying, even after the program is, uh, is, has ended, for me to answer. But one thing I want to tell you is that you are you're going to remain blessed, that Lord Almighty will bless you. Make up your mind today that, Father, grant me grace. Let me understand this series. Understand what Pastor is trying to say for me to structure my life and be what God has ordained me to be. It is well with you. You will succeed. You will excel. Till I come your way next time, my name is Sebastian. One of the Signing out for family line, remain blessed, remain blissful, and be imparted in the grace of heaven. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.